Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Sorry for not having a video out for you guys last week, but I'm here this week and I've got some stuff to cover with you guys. Things like Tekken 8's battle pass and how fans aren't exactly happy with it, Blizzard pretty much saying that we don't own any of our games, and my personal opinion on Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League Season 1 content. Welcome to this week's wrap up. Before we get started, it would be really awesome if you guys liked and subscribed as it really helps with the channel. I'm trying to aim for a 1000 subscriber goal by summer, so let's see if we can make that happen. Also, let's see if we could get 50 likes on this video. Thanks guys. So starting us off, Tekken 8 just recently released Eddie Gordo as a playable character. You could purchase him right now for $8 I believe, I think that's how much I purchased him for. And yeah, for the most part, I've been enjoying playing as him in Tekken 8. He has some really awesome combos and it's kind of fun to use him online. But with the release of Eddie Gordo, also came the release of a season pass for Tekken 8, or rather a battle pass. They're calling it the fight pass and it pretty much works like how any other battle pass would work. You do online fights and you progressively unlock items as you get more XP. The thing is, not exactly everyone is happy about this new battle pass system that they've implemented. I mean, at this point, yeah, we've gotten used to monetization in our video games, but some of them really don't need it. Tekken 8 is a $70 fighting game with DLC that's being periodically released over time. And on top of paying that $70, they're releasing things like the Deluxe Edition Upgrade Pack that's an additional $40. Granted, that gives you all the DLC characters for the year one pass, and it even lets you play some of those characters pretty early. But all of this just kind of reminds me of a comment that was left on a recent video of mine. I basically said that I wasn't going to let the microtransactions of Dragon's Dogma 2 affect my playing experience because you could just get everything in game. And the comments on that video pretty much said that while it's okay that I'm not going to indulge in purchasing those microtransactions, Actions, it's still a pretty worrisome practice that's happening in the game industry today. And I 100% agree with that. I mean, if we regulate letting companies put these microtransactions in the game, and if we add fuel to the fire by purchasing those microtransactions, then they'll just keep adding more and more microtransactions. And thankfully for the case of Dragon's Dogma 2, it didn't affect the gameplay. I'm on my second playthrough right now. But who's to say that a developer won't take out elements of a game because they feel like you'll be better off buying it through microtransactions. I know there's probably games that already do this, but yeah, it's just something that's not great when more big name companies are implementing it into their games. I mean, I'm still going to play Dragon's Dogma 2 and I'm still going to play Tekken 8. I'm just not going to partake in buying a battle pass. And hopefully with us voting with our wallets like this, they'll probably try to dial back adding this many monetization practices into our games. I know that's a little bit of wishful thinking on my end, but you know, you gotta stay hopeful sometimes. But those of you who have Tekken 8, how do you feel about it? Does it bother you that they've added a battle pass to Tekken 8? Are you just not gonna let it affect your playing experience? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. Next, I wanna talk about this Blizzard end user license agreement. Now, I'm far from the first person to talk about this, and uh, I know I'm kind of late to the party on giving my opinion on this, but I'm not too pleased with this new agreement that Blizzard has brought for to us. So people have been pointing out that in the user agreement, they state your use of the platform is licensed, not sold to you. And you hereby acknowledge that no title or ownership with respect to the platform or the games is being transferred or assigned. And this agreement should not be construed as a sale of any rights. So I know it's pretty much not news at this point, but we, we all kind of known for a while that our games, our digital games at the very least, aren't exactly ours. And I'm not too too big of a fan of that considering the prices that we have to pay for these video games. I understand that making a video game is very expensive, but then to have us pay the market price for what would usually be ownership of a video game, to just tell us that it's not our game, that we are just on this platform, and that we're basically just licensing our product is kind of messed up. And over the years, I've noticed that it's almost been the same case for physical media as well. I mean, I I remember when I bought Red Dead Redemption 2 for PlayStation 4, a physical copy, and it was pretty much useless. I just had the disc, but I still had to download everything onto my console instead of all the data being on the disc, like how Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 games or PlayStation 2 games would be. I don't know. I'm just not a fan of where this is going for gaming. Basically, we pay all this money, almost a hundred US dollars most of the time, and it's not even really to own our game. It's just to borrow or rent it 
it, almost. It's like the recent story involving Ubisoft and the crew. If you bought the crew way back and you spent $60 on it, you're not able to play it anymore because they shut down the servers and the game isn't accessible anymore to be played. So is that the kind of future that we're all doomed to have? Like, we pay $70 for a game and then once a company is just like, well, we're done with the servers, we're going to make it inaccessible after you spend all this money, that's it, it's just yoinked from your library. I, I don't know, that just kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, sorry to go off on a ramble like that, but I just noticed that with uh, Blizzard and with Ubisoft and I just felt like I had to put my two cents in. Let me know what you guys think in the comments regarding Blizzard's new end user license agreement. Are you guys still going to be playing Blizzard games? I mean, if you've got a lot of Blizzard games, I imagine that even with this, it's not going to deter you from actually playing the games that you've got on their platform because you, you spent the money already. You might as well play it while you still have it. But how do you guys feel about Blizzard saying that you don't own these games and that they could potentially end the service or accessibility within them whenever they want? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Now, you know, they say bad things happen in threes. So let's talk about season one of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Season one of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is the season of fear. So they bring back Scarecrow, who was a major antagonist in Batman Arkham Knight. Well, we're hopping the multiverse in this new season, and now we have to stop Brainiac a second time and save the Joker while we're at it. Now, this is a new Joker. It's not Mark Hamill's Joker. I'm not entirely sure why Mark Hamill couldn't reprise his role in this season, but if I had to guess, I would probably say that the people he works with informed him of the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League drama, and he probably didn't want anything to do with that. That, or he probably wanted to just end his performance as the Arkham Joker and the Arkham Knight. Regardless, this is a Joker from another timeline, so I guess it's just a different person entirely. A lot of people aren't happy with this new season, and a lot of people aren't happy with the design of the Joker. I've been playing through it, I picked up Suicide Squad when it was discounted, and I played through the story, and now I'm trying to play through the season. It is just not great at all. I mean, they start off the season kind of like with what Call of Duty does whenever they have a new season. It's just this massive pre-rendered cutscene, animated cutscene, when you start up the game, and then once you actually go into the season, the Suicide Squad are just standing on a rooftop, you see Season of Fear or something like that pop up on the screen. Then once you hit one of the buttons on your controller, Amanda Waller takes you through the mission details of what you're going to do in this new timeline. There's been no cutscenes, and it just seems like an endless amount of grinding. You just have to go from place to place to do these mission objectives, and then I guess something is supposed to happen. I haven't reached that far, but I feel very unmotivated to play this season because the entertainment value is just not there. It's just the regular Suicide Squad game with these additional missions and then I guess once you're done with all those missions, something's supposed to happen that frees the Joker and you fight Brainiac again and that's the season. It feels like no love was put into this additional content and it really shows, like you can just witness it. You don't even have to play it, you can just see it. The people who have played it, myself included, have been experiencing bugs and issues with the performance so that's just another can of worms that Rocksteady is gonna have to deal with. I don't know how they're going to be able to keep this up for much longer. This game is pretty much a dead game at this point, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. If you guys have played the game or own the game and have played the season, let me know in the comments what you guys think about it because I'm not having a good time at all. But you know what is a good time? Talking about the games that are coming out next week. Bodney Manor. Welcome to Botany Manor, a stately home in 19th century England. You play as inhabitant Arabella Green, a retired botanist. Explore your house and gardens filled with research to figure out the ideal habitat of forgotten flora. Grow each plant to discover the mysterious qualities they hold. Coming out on Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC, April 9th. Children of the Sun. On a deadly road trip into darkness, control the path of a single bullet and unleash a fury of vengeance on the sinister cult that ruined 
spend your life in this tactical puzzle shooter. Coming to PC, April 9th. Final Factory. Final Factory blends factory building, spaceship design, and a rich universe to explore. Build a mega factory and command a massive fleet against the hostile local aliens. Discover new technologies and unlock the secrets of an ancient civilization as you explore an infinite cosmos. Coming to PC, April 9th. Adabon Shadow Legacy. Adabon Shadow Legacy is a fast-paced stealth platformer game where you become Ayana, the last descendant of a forgotten race. Harness mystical shadow powers, high-tech gadgets, and avoid or kill to uncover the truth about your past and the key to saving a dying, morally great universe. Coming to PC, April 10th. The Planet Crafter. Transform the ecosystem of a hostile planet to make it livable for humans. Survive, collect, build your base, then create oxygen, heat, and pressure to make a brand new biosphere. Coming to PC, April 10th. Goons, Legends, and Mayhem, a frantic blend of beat-em-up and arcade hockey that plays out over various themed levels with opposing teams of heroes outfitted with unique abilities. Insane sports action like you've never seen before. Coming out on Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. April 11th, Revival Recolonization. Set in a post-apocalyptic version of Earth, Revival is a 4X strategy game where the world and its rules can change at key moments creating a deep and highly replayable experience. Coming out on PC, April 11th. And finally, Anomaly Collapse. Command a squad of adorably fierce warriors in Anomaly Collapse, a turn-based roguelite strategy game that offers a fresh twist to an old formula. Face off against otherworldly beings and uncover the dark secrets of supernatural calamities. Immerse yourself in a story where every move counts. Coming to PC, April 12th. And that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for stopping by for this week's wrap-up. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll have more videos available for you soon. Until next time, stay calm, stay casual, and I'll see you guys in the next one.